The Council of uh, Low and Medium Ampular uh, Sections uh, of the Rectum, but I was, uh, but I decided to change the name a little bit. Having the intrigue here, we'll talk about uh, uh, first about surgery, but also we'll talk about the cancer uh, of this section. Uh, uh, when we can uh, avoid uh, the surgery, we do know the studies for the short radiation therapy resulted in a small decrease of uh, relapse rate from 11 to 5 uh, percent. So formally, uh, there was not that much of advantages, and there was no differences of five-year uh, overall survival. So, because it's very important factor, because our task is not just to do the surgery, but also to treat patients, because we are not uh, only surgeons, but we are oncologists. Dutch colorectal cancer group showed similar results, with no increase of overall survival rate and uh, great benefits with uh, relapse rate. Mercury trial also showed that good centers with good surgeons and radiologists, they can uh, select patients for surgery without issues uh, to um, outcomes, and they show the results. And we do know that uh, chemoradiation therapy has its disadvantages, and that's a Dutch group analysis. 14 years after the study, they showed that there were no benefits of the outcomes about chemoradiation therapy produced in rather significant sphincter dysfunction and other consequences of uh, late radiation uh, reactions. Since uh, we talk about the uh, uh, rectal lower and mid lampula, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's uh, very good because the results of the uh, low upper ampulla results are better than the lower and middle ampulla results. And if you look at the stages, we'll discuss them a bit later. And I'd like to uh, say that separation to uh, uh, lower and uh, mid lampula is rather conditional. Uh, it's uh, separation with regard to uh, the separation with regard to uh, pelvic peritoneum is uh, more appropriate to discuss the issues we're going to discuss today. And so with regard to pelvic peritoneum. Uh, we're talking about the tumors located below it, and it's uh, better reflects the task in the uh, talk. So, looking at the history, 20 years ago there was a simple approach, digital uh, study, uh, uh, mobile tumor, long treatment, mobile tumor, short course, uh, and also, so it's 2021 clinic guidelines uh, with this end, they uh, assume everything will be used. Uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, long treatment, long causes, short treatment, surgery. So let's see what has changed in the last 20 years. The first article uh, of uh, 2003 about the local recurrence in patients after TME. And we can see a rather uh, uh, we, we, we see direct uh, dependence of uh, long-term results uh, on the stage. So Duke A93, you can see them there for ourselves. It's another article, 2013, quite interesting study. Uh, essentially, what is the meaning of the study? It shows us uh, another factors, uh, factors prognosis as uh, uh, shows direct correlation with the stage. Uh, 2019 study, our Asian colleagues quite nicely discussed prognostic factors. Uh, in addition to those which talked about, they divided patients in two groups with uh, factors with high negative prognosis uh, and without that. They divided those patients into two groups. One of them were treated with radiotherapy and then surgery. Others, others, uh, in others, there were no radiation therapy. Patients with low progression risk. Uh, uh, without uh, the absence of radiotherapy, they proof for remote result. Patients with high risk of progression with negative factors. Also, radiotherapy did result in considerable improvement of uh, long term results. But when they compared low and high risk groups, they found out that presence of those factors is actually the f uh, is actually a fundamental reason 
to change the uh, long-term survival rates. And uh, those factors were the invasion depths, leaf node status, uh, circular uh, growth, uh, extramural invasion, and tumor spread. And also, talking about that, uh, we should understand the uh, surgical experience and uh, treatment and equipment in the clinic and uh, uh, ability of the clinic to provide rehabilitation uh, is different. And so we should understand it when planning uh, treatment for our patients. Generally, we have seen the following. If we talk about patients who when considered as uh, surgical candidates, uh, patients uh, with, with a, uh, so uh, so we so patients without fascia involvement and without negative prognostic factors, usually these are candidates for surgery without negative one therapy, and patients without uh, fascia involvement, but with negative prognostic factors, which we mentioned, where it makes sense and maybe uh, more appropriate to consider some neod one treatment. But which treatment we should consider as a neod one for such patients? Well, patients with low, uh, without negative prognostic factors, with low risk, mostly the patients for surgery. And we should understand that, as you do know, that we also advocate for watching weight, but it's a very narrow, selective group of patients. Mostly patients without negative factors, uh, risk factors are candidates for surgery. And it provides better results. And uh, not often we can reach full response someone will have over treated patients without any advantages. Uh, chemo radiation therapy has also its side effects, which we do know about. I don't want to dwell upon that too long. There are arguments uh, uh, against surgery, like uh, in case of early stage of this, we can use it, but if everything was uh, fine. If the effect of radiation therapy is not sufficient, then again we'll come back to the surgery, which we can do from the very beginning, but also there will be some late toxic signs. The arguments uh, against radiation therapy, there is a local relapse risk is much uh, less, and we generally can reach very good results. Who's right? It's an issue to discuss. Uh, we discuss it today, we're going to discuss it in the future, so maybe uh, it requires further studies. As a conventional patient, standard patients whom we decided to do surgery without neodions and uh, neodions, the clinical T2, 9 centimeter tumor, we did surgery, morphological stage was com confirmed, the clinical stage was uh, properly uh, identified without uh, facial invasion, uh, without no prognostic, without any prognostic factors. And other patients, also T2, uh, clinically, uh, is, it was confirmed by morphology, but this patient underwent surgery, uh, and uh, no additional treatment was done. But there is another group of patients without fascia involvement, but there are some negative prognostic factors. Like, for instance, these patients, uh, the T3B tumor and the N1C MVI plus, uh, but uh, CRME is not involved. So, fascia is not involved. How to treat such patient? Formally, this patient is uh, benefits if we consider not it's like surgeon, but it's surgery. And uh, that's it. But if you consider this patient as an uh, uh, oncologist, uh, but we should consider something, but, but how? Uh, then, uh, then uh, CRM is involved, but through due to venous deposits at the level of the vesicles. So this fact, this fascia involvement was found due to high quality radiation diagnostics. Not every clinic can see it, and it mostly in those cases will undergo surgery. And there is a uh, uh, experienced morphologist, he will find those venous deposits, and then the surgeon, once he saw this histology, he, will, he should think that maybe the one treatment should be done. And maybe uh, he will think that uh, some pre-surgical treatment might be a good idea. Because presence of these negative factors actually has a negative effect on long-term result. And other patients, the same thing. We have a tumor which doesn't affect CRM, but there are deposits which affect fascia. So how are we going to consider this patient? For the surgery, formally, yes. There are no, uh, it's not considered even 10 M stages. There are no, uh, there are no uh, guide, uh, guidelines for that. But uh, we understand that the uh, patient's fate depends on the proper treatment. Uh, it's a, a BECAR uh, group study, 
they enrolled patients without uh, uh, fascia involvement, uh, but uh, but with involved uh, lymph nodes. And uh, conventionally, those patients uh, shouldn't go uh, chemotherapy. Uh, with uh, forcible surgery, they decided to replace uh, radiochemistry with uh, radio and uh, uh, chemistry like fulfurinox uh, was followed with surgery. You see the inclusion criteria, so you could see that it's not that cancer which we assume. If we look at the criteria, what is the uh, what is the cancer we do, we, we treat? These are patients where we cannot do radical surgery with a standard TME. Here, initially, we can do uh, conventional TME because fa uh, fascia is not involved, but uh, uh, looking at the lymph nodes involvement, they are candidate for neo therapy. So the, the car group decided to replace long term of uh, radiochemotherapy to pre-op uh, chemotherapy using fulfurinox. Uh, long term results expect to see in 2024. But preliminary, I talked to the investigators, and he said that he's very happy that after several uh, uh, chemotherapy causes, you might turn into smaller ones, and they see the conditions that they, they never expected after chemo radiation therapy. But by, in 2024, I hope they will see if they were right or not. Then uh, uh, locally advanced erectile cancer, ESMO guidelines. But once again, I would like to say that what we call uh, locally uh, advanced cancer and uh, Western definition is different. It says that routine administration of uh, chemoradiation therapy is a matter for discussion because the discussion locally advanced cancer depends on the size of the nodes, and we discuss it. It's not always uh, can be confirmed by morphology. If these patients. Uh, so, uh, as uh, we can understand, sometimes those patients don't need any chemoradiation therapy. And today, in 2021, we should consider that patient treatment must be based on the standards on one hand, but on the other way, the hand it should be individualized. Uh, we should uh, personalize treatment. You look at the localization, especially in men, we should consider uh, age, uh, sex, social status, progression signs. And also, we should always take into account patient preferences, uh, telling patient about all potential options of treatment and choosing uh, most appropriate management. Uh, talking about the local relapse risk, uh, possibility for stoma to be placed, understand that all stomas can be closed in the end of the day. Some of them would be permanent. We should understand uh, incontinence, uh, sexual uh, disorders. We should consider everything with patient. Uh, we should consider patient preferences and then decide uh, and on the side, if it is surgery or, or not, quality of life, um, is, uh, it, we should continue because uh, doing extirpation, it will be uh, it, won't, it will, will be radical, but it will affect uh, quality of life. This patient we're going to discuss on Mon uh, the coming Monday, the tumor five centimeters, T2 and zero and zero, and uh, with quite low location. Formally, he's con candidate for extirpation, but we have to. And it uh, actually ex ex explanation was this fabulous. We should can do the surgery. We can stop with the surgery only. But you can, if the patient would agree on the surgery or not, we should discuss with the patient. Should it tell to the patient that he has a chance, about 60 to 70 percent, after long term radiation therapy, to get full response? Yes, we should tell that uh, person that. And only then, because the patient will decide what to do. And we should understand that surgeries, which all do surgeries, and we'll do, we all show that we do surgery quite fine, but still we do see some complications, each one of us, and all these issues should be discussed with the patient. As it's an article of 2015, it's a British uh, publication. This is a questions or issues discussed with patients by oncologists. The, uh, you see the upper part was discussed, lower part which are not discussed. Maybe because surgeons are busy, maybe not all patients do uh, read, uh, do ready to admit and to, uh, all the consequent surgery, but we should understand it and all after full discussion we can come uh, to the final decision. That's another interesting article by Professor Minsky about the ch emerging trends in the treatment of rectal cancer. To understand who is Professor Minsky, his uh, bibliography is more than 260 uh, uh, points, 
and all the articles are dedicated not only to neo divine uh, key malicious therapy but to intensification it in case of esophageal and rectal uh, cancer so holds in his life he was advocate for neo divine uh, uh, key malicious therapy in pre op settings and emergency long term results in the article he said that the common management of neo divine treatment at 340 to 64 and 9 plus uh, is uh, seems to be like uh, over treatment of the patients, and uh, um, maybe we should a bit change of our uh, response. I'm sorry for that. We have just one more minute left. You will have one more minute for your of your time. Okay, Alexei. So the standard uh, regime of treatment of our patients in our country. It's operable cancer with a signs of uh, negative uh, prognosis, short treatment, uh, surgery, and therapy, prior to systemic uh, therapy. Systemic therapy improves uh, long-term results. Uh, what uh, What's alternative you've got? The half of the audience should be moved to the neodivant treatment instead of uh, radiation. And I will do it uh, rather rapidly. So why we're talking about the compliance and benefits, it's a rapid trial, which set a absolutely different task, but it shows that patients with uh, chemotherapy in neodivant mode uh, with a higher rate will end up the whole cycle. Uh, or, uh, or six causes are uh, treated by more than half patients versus patients who are doing adjuvant therapy. They should reach local colleges, got the uh, reference papers, and go back, uh, got the drugs. It's the same in Europe. Less than half of patients get uh, half of the treatment uh, of chemo services. So our study in 2015, when our patients were treated uh, uh, instead of short course by four uh, causes of capox. Uh, we have uh, we had effect of 103 patients, so 83% of patients after that actually avoided radiation therapy and underwent surgery. And moreover, in 8% of patients we got complete response only after four causes of chemotherapy. There was no LTT uh, effect, well, uh, 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 and uh, for formally. So it's time. Time. Your time is up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. So briefly, say so we should understand if there is a quite a short surgeon, if he knows he will do everything, uh, if there is a thinking uh, surgeon oncologist understands that his task not only to the surgeon but even to treat the patients. A uh, difference of them is that uh, surgeon oncologist works uh, in a clinic, he provides a whole set of uh, interventions, and uh, just a surgeon, uh, he just does the surgeon. They're both men, they, but another one has uh, duties. So with surgeons and oncologists, we have uh, duties uh, before our patients. Uh, talking about the mesorectal fascia, one, two, three millimeters. What is that? How to do it? Uh, you should understand. We know that ideal mesorectomy provides good results, but nevertheless, we should also understand uh, that during surgery, we do such movements. And such movements with the tools and pinch movements, these two millimeters could be easily changed. So that's the thickness of monopolar, which work is just 2.4 millimeters. This difference is quite subjective. So, and it's a quotation by Bulata Kujava, who lived in St. Petersburg, just half part of his life. We should always remember, no matter how we are self-assured, we should understand that we treat people, they are live people, and our life, their lives depend on us, there are lots of factors.